Week of Easter 3, Monday, the blessing of a poor soul. A prayer of David. Bow down your ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Psalm 86, verse 1. Dear Redeemed, a king who is poor and needy? King David? Is he serious? Yes, absolutely serious. There is no jest here at all, nor is this some reverse psychological exercise of pietism, as when one says the opposite of what is true in order to be seen by others as a really religious person. No, King David is completely serious. He is poor and needy. For this reason, he begs the Lord his God to bow down his ear to him and to hear him. The poverty spoken of is not that of the body, nor of earthly things. In other words, this is not physical poverty. It is a spiritual poverty, and it is at this point that Jesus utters the first words of his Sermon on the Mount, speaking directly about the foundational doctrine of the Christian faith, salvation by grace through faith. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, verse 3. Christians are poor in spirit. Others are as well. It's just that Christians know this, confess it, and rejoice at the consequences of such spiritual poverty. Ponder each of these for a few moments. First, Christians know that they are poor in spirit. Spiritually, they know their destitute condition. They know that they are wretched souls who have no righteousness that is of any worth, no holiness in which to reside, no spiritual offering of oneself, such that God would be pleased. So, to give one's heart to Jesus is a most wretched gift. The self-righteous do not know this. The poor do. Second, the Christian not only knows this, but also confesses this truth. Indeed, it is most certainly true that I am a poor, miserable sinner. O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. But you also confess Christ's poverty, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. This brings us to the third part, the consequences of being poor in spirit. One result is that you have the richness of Christ. In baptism, you have been washed in his holy, precious blood that was shed for you. The perfect righteousness of the Son of God is yours. That wretched heart of yours is continually cleansed by God's forgiving word. Whether rich or poor in earthly goods, you are a child of God and an heir of heaven. O oh, you poor soul, blessed are you, for the kingdom of heaven is yours. Prayer. O Lord, I am a poor, miserable sinner, and you are a gracious, generous Father. Knowing and believing these truths, my soul magnifies you, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for you have regarded my low estate. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed, for you, who are mighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. And your mercy is on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm. You have scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. You have put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent empty away. You have helped me in remembrance of your mercy, as you have spoken through your word. Amen. Hymn number 385, stanzas 1, 6, and 8. What is the world to me, and all its vaunted pleasure, when thou and thou alone, Lord Jesus, art my treasure? Thou only, dearest Lord, my soul's delight shall be. Thou art my peace, my rest. What is the world to me? The world cannot extol to highly sinful pleasures, and foolishly resigns for them the heavenly treasures. Let others love the world to please their vanity. I love the Lord my God. What is the world to me? What is the world to me? My Jesus is my treasure, my life, my wealth, my all, my friend, my love, my pleasure, my heavenly happiness and bliss eternally. Once more then I would say, what is the world to me?